never asked for any of this. I never asked to be me. I just wanted to be left alone. I'd been chased before, yelled obscenities at, but nothing like this. They were relentless. They <laughs> were Jake and his girlfriend, Cece. A couple of hillbillies from my school that tortured me on a daily basis. But today was different. They were drunk on some power trip to hunt me down. To hunt prune face Patty, the ugliest girl in school. They're not wrong. I am ugly. They call me prune face because when I was six, my mother had fallen asleep smoking a cigarette. Our whole apartment went up. I woke up to my bed engulfed in flames. I screamed for help, but there was nobody to save me. My mother was already dead, and the fire left me half my face. A constant, cruel reminder of who I could have been before I became prune face Patty. Ever since the fire, I've avoided my reflection. It's been so long since I've seen myself. I keep my head down as I pass mirrors to help forget about the burns forever etched on my face. I ran as fast as I could from them. They chased me through all the brush and wild, yelling every insult they could hurl. Whoever pulled you from the fire should have left you in it, Jake yelled. I ran as fast as I could. I put some distance between us. As far away as I felt from them, I could hear their hillbilly screams, as if moments away from me. I was so close to giving up until I came upon it. A cabin just out in the middle of the woods. I ran to the cabin and smashed at the door. It was locked. Let me in, please, please let me in, they'll hurt me. I cried and began to think no one was there. I heard a voice. It was soft, safe. You don't want in here. Nothing good comes from in here. I begged them to let me in pleaded. They want to hurt me. Do you want to hurt me? No, but she might. He sounded scared beyond belief, as if more than I was. I could hear the hillbillies <laughs> closing in. Then the door opened. I ran in and fell to the floor, exhausted. It took a moment to take in my surroundings. It was just a simple cabin, but something caught my eye. In the corner there was some sort of antique covered by a sheet. You can't stay here, not for long. She's dangerous. He spoke from the darkest corner of the room as if he were hiding. He must have been in his forties. He was certainly disheveled and had a long beard I caught a glimpse of. Who is she? I asked. The man emerged from the darkness and looked at me. My scars. My burnt prune face. And then his eyes softened as he said, She is you and me. The beholder. The true judge of beauty. It wasn't until then that I truly saw him too, and noticed he had a large birthmark on his face. I felt in that brief moment, he truly knew what it was like to be me, how it felt to hide who you are from the world. Then, bang, the door flew open. Jake had smashed through the door with Cece cackling behind him. Get that burnt face prune. Let's make her pretty, baby. 
In a flash, Jake was on me, revealing a knife in his hand, inching it at me as he curled his lips into a maniacal smile. I readied myself to accept my fate, but then, out of nowhere, the birthmarked man jumped on him. The two twisted about and fought, turning every which way they seemed almost equally matched. But then there was blood. He got him. Jake had stuck and gutted him with his knife. The man with the birthmark fell to the ground, trying to hold himself together, only to watch his insides pour out between his fingers. Jake stood above him, grunting. God, look at that thing on your face. Looks like a shit stain. The birthmark man gasped for air, his life slowly fading from him as I watched. The couple turned their attention back to me. They squealed their laughter and excitement as they stepped closer. I knew this was it. I had nowhere left to hide. Get a hold of her, baby, Jake spat out. Cece grabbed my face and pulled out a compact mirror from her pocket. She then made me look at myself. A tear ran down my ugly, burnt up prune face as Cece shouted. We're gonna pretty up that prune face of yours. A couple of scars will do you good. Jake lingered the knife back and forth in front of me. Then my eyes caught something else. Something beyond the knife. The man I thought dead had dragged himself over to the covered antique. He held his arm out and grabbed the sheet away revealing an old vanity mirror. Jake wandered over to the birthmarked man. Trying to get a look at that shit stain on your face, buddy? The dying man flipped over on his back, smiled at Jake, saying, I think it's you that needs to take a look at yourself. Jake looked from the birthmarked man to the mirror. His confused smile faded away as what looked like a little girl appeared in the mirror. Her flesh severed in multiple places, and her eyes as deadly as they come. I'd heard stories of the girl in the mirror who killed those ugly on the inside. They were only stories. Tales we'd tell each other as kids to scare each other, but here she was. The girl in the mirror. Before Jake could grasp what was happening, the girl in the mirror had crawled out and was staring him down. He laughed her off as if a gag, and then the unexpected happened. Her face split apart, and I swear I could hear her skull cracking apart with it. It revealed a bloody mound of flesh and fright I couldn't comprehend. And in the blink of an eye, she latched onto Jake with fierce ferocity and devoured him. He screamed in absolute terror as his flesh was torn from his body. Cece ran at them, trying to buck the girl off of Jake. She instead smashed them into the mirror, breaking it into several pieces across the floor. Cece then picked up Jake's knife from the ground and stared down the girl from the mirror. Looks like you're going nowhere now that I broke your mirror, you split-faced ghoul. The girl from the mirror just cocked her head to the side, doing nothing. Then a sound of shattering glass erupted all over, and from the shards of glass on the ground, pale, decomposing, deadly hands reached out and took hold of Cece from all sides. They took hold of her flesh and limbs from different directions and pulled her down and violently apart into pieces as each shard took their different pound of flesh from her. 
before I knew it, she was gone, pools of blood being all that remained of her. The girl in the mirror saw the birthmarked man on the ground. She looked at him like looking at an old friend. She bent down and outlined the birthmark on his face. As she did, he spoke gently to her. Thank you, Mira. Thank you. She then turned to me. She crawled towards me, and suddenly she was inches from my face. I was trembling with absolute terror. Then she slid my hair away from the scarred side of my face to look at me. I looked back at her, and we saw the beauty in each other. I saw the real Mira, and she saw the real me. The man near death now told me with his last words, it's not our wounds that make us ugly, it's how we live with them that defines our beauty. Mira will take care of you. And with that, he let out his final breath and drifted away. It was only Mira and me now. Mira turned from me, and in a way that I can't completely explain, she crawled into the pocket mirror Cece had dropped. And like she was never there, she was gone. I used to want to be left alone, to hide away, to never be seen, but no more. I picked up the pocket mirror and grasped the power of the beauty it held in my hands. The world is going to see me. The world is going to see us. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on Crypt TV.